Have you seen Ray Martin's classic book, The 99 Critical Shots in Pool? It is a must read for any serious pool player. In this video, I discuss and demonstrate the top 10 most interesting and useful shots from Ray's book, brought to life with real game situation examples. For each shot, I show the diagram from the book and then do demonstrations. In shot 8, the cue ball is close to the object ball and draw is required to get a look at the next ball. All examples from this video are from 8 balls shooting stripes. The advice in the book is to jerk the cue back after the hit with a nip stroke like this. A better approach for most people is to elevate the cue instead. This allows for a less nippy stroke and less risk of double hitting the cue ball, and it is easier to get more draw if necessary. Either way, the shot gives us the win. Shot 10 is a common situation where the cue ball can be sent in a wide range of directions using stun, follow, or draw. A follow shot is perfect to get shape on the 8 in the side. Stun along the tangent line is perfect to go off the side rail up table. Here, a three rail path through the center of the table is a good choice. Using the 45 degree rule, I need to send the cue ball into the end rail at 45 degrees to accomplish this. For more information, see the link in the video description. Here, the natural angle comes in too steep and a stun shot comes in too shallow. A stun forward shot gets the job done. Here, with the one blocking the natural path, the only option is outside draw. As with any side spin shot, I use the system for aiming with side spin, or saws, to compensate the aim for cue ball deflection. For more information, see the side spin links in the video description. Did you see the right spin take on the side cushion? Shot 15 is a frozen combination throw shot. The combo is wired to go well to my left of the pocket. If I hit the right side of the 11, the 11 throws the 13 to the left, even farther from the pocket. But if I hit the left side, the 11 will throw the 13 to the right, allowing me to pocket the ball. To get maximum throw, like we need here, use slow speed and aim the 11 for a center to edge hit into the 13. The natural angle, verified by the 30 degree rule peace sign, is perfect for shape on the 11. For more information, see the link in the video description. If I send the cue ball to this ghost ball position to send the 11 to the right to throw the 13 to the right, I can pocket the 13 from any cue ball position. Shot 18 is a cushion first frozen combo throw shot. The wired combo heads well to the left of the pocket. But if I can get a hit on the 11 like this, I can throw the 13 in. Again, to get maximum throw like this, I need slow speed and a center to edge aim of the 11 into the 13. I just need to visualize the cushion first kick angle required to create this hit. See the link in the video description if you need help with aiming kick shots. If you use too much speed, you won't get enough throw. It also won't work if you hit the 11 too full or too thin. Shot 25 shows how to control the cue ball when drawing off a cushion. 
to get shape on the 8 here, I can use straight draw. Here, to get up table for the 8, I need running spin to lengthen the rebound. Did you see the cue ball keep its speed and go long off the cushion? Here, I need a little reverse spin to shorten the rebound. Did you see the cue ball slow down and go short with the reverse spin? Shot 27 is a crossing lines system for aiming bank shots. Here, the goal is to bank the object ball cross side to pocket A. First drop a line from the object ball to the banking cushion nose. Then visualize a line from the object ball to the pocket opposite from the target pocket. Then look at the target pocket from the cushion point and see where it intersects the line. Drop this point to the nose of the cushion for the required aim point for the bank. There are other systems you might find easier to find the same line of aim. You can instead use the mirror method to measure from the object ball to the nose of the cushion, and then mirror this distance to the other side, and then see where the line to the pocket crosses the cushion nose. This gives the same line of aim. You could also use the equal distance method instead. Just estimate the line of the shot with the cue, and then move the tip until it is halfway between the object ball and the cue. The tip position gives you the required aim point on the cushion nose. That is my favorite of the three approaches for a shot like this. With a little practice, it is fast and easy, and it gives the exact same line of aim as the other methods. Regardless of how you get the ideal aim, the speed needs to be just right. Too much speed sends the ball short, and too little speed sends the ball long. Because of this, I prefer using a different system to aim that allows me to use more speed. It is called the one-third more than twice system. Here, I am aiming at 2.5 from one-third more than twice at about 5.3, and I use my cue to extend the measured distance beyond the rail when necessary. See the link in the video description for more information and detailed demonstrations. This system is very reliable for fast speed banks. Shot 32 concerns how to aim rail cut shots like this. The advice in the book to hit the object ball and cushion at the same time with no side spin is technically incorrect. If you do, the cue ball will throw the 8 into the rail slightly, causing the 8 to bounce away from the rail. In slow motion, you can see that the ball and cushion were hit at very close to the same time. To pocket this ball with no side spin, you need to hit the cushion slightly before the ball. The cue ball compresses the cushion slightly before hitting the ball. This creates a small cut angle away from the rail, which counteracts the cut-induced throw effect. For more information and demonstrations concerning throw, see the tutorial link in the video description. Another option with this type of shot is to go cushion first with running spin, although the cue ball will go in very different directions based on whether you rebound off the cushion first or hit the ball while compressing the cushion. Again, with every side spin shot, I use the system for aiming with side spin, saws, to get an accurate aim. With a cushion first hit, which is what I'm aiming for here, the cue ball comes off the tangent line of the 8 after rebounding off the cushion. If you instead hit the 8 while the cue ball is still compressing the cushion, the side spin takes after the 8 is gone, causing the cue ball to rebound up table. Shot 34 deals with this unfortunate situation where the cue ball and object ball are both frozen to the same rail. To avoid the side pocket point, and to counteract the cue ball's natural tendency to be pushed out by the nose of the cushion, the best play here is to shoot away from the rail slightly with left spin to swerve the cue ball back to the object ball. I cover this and related types of shots in detail in my straight rail shot effects video. Check it out via the link in the video description if you want to learn more. Shot 35 deals with cue ball control options when the cue ball and object ball are not far from each other and frozen to the same cushion. 
To get reasonable shape on the 8 up table, I can follow forward with right spin. This shot is very difficult on this table since the ball rattles in the pocket very easily. This would go on tables that don't have such large pocket facing angles. I was able to get it to go with the cue ball closer, where it is not being pushed away from the cushion as much. Did you see how the pocket barely accepted the ball? That gives me a good chance at the out. Here, I could just roll forward for a long, tough shot at the 8, but this 8 is too missable. A better play here is to use draw with left spin. This shot is much easier than the earlier follow shot. That leaves a very makeable shot on the 8. I could use the same technique to even get shape much higher up table like this. Again, check out my straight rail shot effects video if you want to learn more about these types of shots. Shot 49 is an interesting carom throw shot. The 11 can't be cut straight into the side pocket without using side spin. I miss barely hitting the 11 first, or barely hitting the 13 first. I need to use left spin to throw the 11 to the right, but if I hit the 11 first, I won't get enough throw at this angle. To pocket this ball, I need to hit the 13 first to send the cue ball in a more favorable direction to throw the 11. To get maximum spin-induced throw, use slow speed stun with about half of maximum side spin. For the reasons why, see the link in the video description. These 10 shots are a good pool workout. Practice and master these important techniques, and they might help you win more games. Before I close, I want to warn you about a few minor annoyances concerning the 99 Critical Shots in Pool book. Many of the diagrams are far from perfect. First, they are not drawn to scale. With the balls shown so big, they would have a hard time squeezing into the pockets. And the line of aim of the cue isn't always shown accurately. And sometimes the shot is impossible with the ball layout shown, as with this draw shot. With such a large cut angle, that amount of draw is not possible as described. And sometimes the advice is not technically correct. The book also has a heavy emphasis on straight pull, the game Ray Martin played the most and the best. Over 50 of the 220 pages are dedicated specifically to the game of straight pull. Regardless, the book contains an excellent collection of shot examples, and I highly recommend it along with all the other great pool books listed at the link in the video description. And if you really want to learn about all important pool shots, check out the video encyclopedia of pool shots, or VEPS. It contains 750 shots in 50 different categories, with 250 useful gems of the game. VEPS is the most comprehensive collection of shots ever published, where all of pool's secrets are revealed. And the VEPS shots are not just diagrams in a book, they are brought to life with complete explanations and demonstrations, much like the examples in this video. I hope you enjoy and benefit from VEPS and the 99 Critical Shots in Pool. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.